You're listening to DraftKings Network. Hello, welcome to the Hockey Show. My name is Roy Bellamy. That guy over there to my left is named David Drork. He works for the Hockey News. And we have a special announcement for everybody here. We are covering the National Hockey League's All-Star Game a week before the Super Bowl. Uh, so it's going to be hectic travel for me, but we are going to cover the <laughs> shit out of this game, oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We are going to Toronto. We're taking over downtown Toronto for a few days. If it doesn't snow. It's going to be cold. <laughs> it is going to be cold. We are going to prepare ourselves for that wind. Layers. And layers and layers of sleet. Uh, so we will be joining Sam Reinhardt and Sergey Bobrovsky up there in Toronto. That's right. And freeze our asses off. So, yeah, uh, you'll be getting content from us, videos, probably not about the game. Who knows? A L- little bit of Toronto culture. A little bit of Toronto culture, possibly. Uh what kind of culture are we talking about? It's a melting pot, isn't it? it well, not this time of year. but um, No, no, it's not melting. It's freezing. It's no, a freezing it's, pot. Toronto is known for its great food. Yeah. Uh, half of the year, it's known for its great weather. There's some beautiful architecture downtown. Uh, I think we may even be tra- sampling some native Toronto cuisine. Ooh. Uh, I, there, there's a lot of cool non-hockey stuff that we're going to work into uh, in addition to our hockey coverage, which should be pretty extensive. Well, uh, I'm currently going through a uh, thing called Dry January, <laughs> uh, which I am not happy about. Uh, this guy actually ordered a non-alcoholic beer when we went to lunch the other day. Yeah, it was a ginger beer. <laughs> It was delicious. And you ordered it with a straight face, so kudos to you. No, I ordered it with an angry face. Um, <laughs> Fair. Yeah, but uh, the, that would be the first. We will be going up there on the first for four days, yeah. uh, covering All-Star Weekend. So February 1st would be my first day of an alcoholic bre- beverage. The first time in 30, 31 days. Yeah. And my liver is ready. My body is ready for that poison. All right. Um Unfortunately, we had to talk about the Florida Panthers, who are now currently on a three-game losing streak. It's the first losing streak since March of 2023, when we all thought that they weren't going to make the playoffs. That yeah. was before the tirade on the bench by Paul Maurice in Toronto. Uh, so they will bounce back from this. Um, they will play Friday against Minnesota at home, but they will bounce back from this. But, I mean, they should have won the last two games against Anaheim and Detroit. Uh, they did not show up for New Jersey, though. No, the Devils game was kind of a thing. Well, you see, that's the thing, though. They, the Devils game was okay because they just ran into a really hot goaltender. And it was just one of those games where they weren't that upset with how they played. It was just kind of, eh, it's just one of those days you move on from it. Yeah. Then you get to the Anaheim and the Detroit games. Anaheim, you had two separate two-goal leads that you couldn't hold on to. So that's where the frustration goes in there. The game opened up. They weren't playing the defensive style. And that's what happens. And, and then against Detroit, you get another hungry team comes in. You get a you score first, which you've been lights out scoring first. That didn't happen. Right. You take another lead. You get, you get a third period lead. Nope, that didn't work either. So the Panthers right now, they're working through some things. Well, Sergey Bobrovsky, uh, Sergey, I'm sorry, Alexander Barkov was not in the lineup uh, for the Detroit game, uh, but neither was Patrick Kane. Uh, so both teams were shorthanded. Yeah. Detroit won't have Patrick Kane for a while. Uh, and I was really hoping that Anton Liddell, who usually takes over that center spot on the first line when Barkov's out, eh, what are you going to do? No, I was actually pretty pleased with the, the decision to keep Lundell and Lusterine together and move Reinhardt to their wing as opposed to moving Lundell up to like with Rodriguez on the wing. Just because Lundell and Lusterine are so good together. I thought that that was maybe Lundell's best game of the year. He was very active. He was getting the puck. He was getting shots on goal. He was controlling it. It was just very what you want to see from him, what we thought we were going to see from him after he was such active, had such a great training camp and a preseason. So will that be something that they can build on? Will maybe that confidence boost Lundell's game when Barkov does come back? You know, we'll see. Because Reinhardt looked really good on that wing. Yeah. Uh, Paul Maurice was flabbergasted. He could not even answer Katie Engelson's first question. He didn't, no. like, he didn't know what was going on. I mean, he knew what was going yeah. on. He was so upset and frustrated about what happened. Um Maybe you just didn't want to get fined because of the penalty situation. I think that's exactly situation. what it is. You yeah. Remember before the season, the NHL read the riot act to the coaches about criticizing the officials, and Paul Maurice kind of had a highlight video involved in that. So, yeah, it's not surprising that Paul <laughs> is just kind of <laughs> tripping over himself to not get in trouble and criticize the officiating because it absolutely deserved a little criticism after that game. But here, here's the thing. The first period, we saw three scrums, and we saw what, 
two coincidental minors. Obviously, one of them, one of them, was the taking off of the helmet. That's all Matt yeah. Ruffin call now. But why coincidental minors in that situation? Why? I mean, that should have been a power play. And but I, I just don't understand why you have to take one person off. Yeah. Like uh, maybe he started the scrum. Maybe it happens so much where it's like. I'm either taking none of you or I'm taking two of you. I'm not just going to take the one guy who rips your helmet off and you're staying, you know, because there's always the pushing and the shoving that happens after the whistles, whatever. That's hockey. Then somebody takes it to the next level and the ref with the balls makes that call. The ref that wants to keep everything even maybe keeps the game even, Mm -hmm. which, and I don't know if this is where you're going with this and I apologize if I'm jumping the gun, but the third period, why do we always, 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 always have to have embellishment called coinciding with a penalty? Why? Exactly. Like, if it's embellishment, then there probably wouldn't be a penalty involved. He's just diving. I, I don't know. The, the one thought that crossed my mind last night, have you ever seen an embellishment call ever in your life and thought, yeah, I get that one? I Well, first of all, I've never seen an embellishment call that didn't have a penalty prior to that. No. Never. Ever. Never. And I don't know how I felt. I don't know how I felt about Rodriguez's uh, quote-unquote dive in that situation. Whatever it, it was, I think it was just bad officiating all the way throughout that game, one. and of course it led to the power play goal that ended overtime. So mm-hmm. the Panthers, despite being on a, uh, a back-to-back points uh, point, I, I can't even call it a streak. Back-to-back games with a points, yeah, they are on a the three-game point. losing streak. A loser point. A loser point. I hate, I hate calling that a loser point. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we don't have time to get into the Western Conference. We have a minute left, uh, but it is flipped on its head, really. The Jets are now the best team in the league. Uh, the Jets and the Nucks. Who saw Knicks. that coming? Yeah, and the Edmonton Oilers, who started off terribly, are now in a playoff spot. Yeah. Oh, look out for Edmonton. Look out for Edmonton. <laughs> like, I feel, I'm, I'm sure Stugatz has already done that in his weekend observations. <laughs> look out for, watch out for the Oilers. Watch out for the Oilers. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is flipped on its head in the Western Conference. Um, coming up next, we have Jackie Redman from the Jackie Redman Show. That is on the NHL's YouTube page. You can find her there. She used to work, well, she probably still works at WWE right now. And uh, she used to work at the NHL Network and on Sportsnet. She... Very interesting. Very interesting. So you're going to love this interview. We'll be right back. All right, it's time for the 10-minute misconduct. And in the penalty box with us right now is you all laughing for no apparent reason, David. (laughs) In the penalty box right now is Jackie Rentman from the Jackie Rentman Show on the NHL's YouTube page. This is a new show. uh, And uh, so far, it's going going along pretty well. Uh, Why don't you describe the show for our listeners, Jackie? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Not my first time in a penalty box. I did play (laughs) hockey growing up, and uh, I had a problem managing my emotions, to say the very least. So I feel very at home in this situation. (laughs) Thank you for keeping it together Um, for us today. Yeah. Yes, listen. No, We're just getting started. Who knows what's going to happen? A couple Uh, cross-checks. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, listen, I always went into the corner, elbows up, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was a feisty player. But um, as for the show, you know, we're super excited. We're two episodes in now. We're actually in the midst of filming episode three um, right now. Uh, that's where I am. I'm at NHL head office right now getting that done. So um, mm-hmm. I feel really grateful for the opportunity from the NHL to do something that lives online, that's on YouTube, and that really, you know, is. Uh, personality driven and and something where we're trying to get people from outside the game and inside the game um, talking about hockey and why they love it. So for us, you know, booking the guests is the the biggest challenge and trying to get musicians, celebrities, wrestlers, athletes from other sports, um, and then personalities from within the NHL as well uh, to come on and, and talk about their hobbies and things that they're into. So uh, we're just getting started. It's in its infancy, but I'm, I'm excited for the challenge. Well, you mentioned wrestling, and obviously you spent your time with uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, and you've obviously talked to CM Punk, who is a huge Blackhawks fan. And in your time in the WWE, who have you come across as far as talent is concerned who are big hockey fans? Well, CM Punk is number one. I, I'm not sure that anyone is as close in terms of just being as diehard as he is. And I think it's well documented in the media that he is a diehard Blackhawks fan. What I think a lot of people don't realize is that this guy is a, a true fan of the game. Like, he follows the whole league. He knows everything that's going on. Contracts, coaches getting fired in other places. Like, he he follows all of it. He, he loves the Hawks. 
but he is somebody that pays attention to everything that's going on. And I think that the people that are most passionate about the sports they love are like that. Um, so he is very well versed in anything NHL related. Um, in terms of other wrestlers that I've come across that are big fans, I mean, Sami Zayn uh, is a big Habs fan. Um, he's Canadian. He's very popular in WWE. Um, Edge, who obviously had a very long and storied career with WWE, is a huge Leafs fan, huge Maple Leafs fan. So when he was with WWE, when I first started this role, uh, he and I would talk about the Leafs quite a bit uh, because we share that mutual pain of rooting <laughs> for that team. Um, so those would be the ones that come to mind right away. But I think CM Punk is probably um, the biggest the biggest one. Like I didn't meet CM Punk because I worked for WWE. I met CM Punk a few years ago because I was working for NHL network and he's such a big hockey fan. So uh, that's all we talk about. Uh, Phil and I, we don't really talk about anything wrestling related. We only talk about hockey for the most part. So do you think that he would uh, actually switch roles and actually become a hockey analyst? He told me that he would work in hockey when, when his uh, WWE career is, is actually done. He said he's super open to it. He loves the game. He's actually, uh, I think, had talks with different places um, in the past when he took time off away from wrestling about doing that sort of thing. So I think as sports become more and more personality-driven and roles kind of shift, I mean, we have analysts and we will always have analysts. And we'll always have play-by-play -play and color people. But I think there's a lot more room now for sports entertainers, sports personalities to have a role in sports. And I think CM Punk would absolutely be open to working in some capacity in hockey uh, down the road. He's got some, some goals to achieve in WWE still. But, yeah, he, uh, he loves the game. I love it. I, I'll be looking forward to that mixing of genres for sure because there's plenty of emotion that comes into wrestling. So I'd love to see that applied to hockey. Uh, Jackie, I did want to ask you about uh, just this season kind of on the whole so far. We've hit the second or the, the halfway point, rather. And uh, there have been some fun storylines, I think, obviously, down here in South Florida. We've had some that we've been following up in your neck of the woods as well. But I'm curious uh, if you've had any favorite storylines so far this year. When you talk about Florida, I got to mention the Florida Panthers. I was literally just chatting with Carter Verhage uh, about the Panthers and the season that they're having. I think they've proven a lot of people wrong. Despite going to the final last year, I think coming into this season, most people had them taking a step back because of injuries. So I think they've been a big story, proving that like they're legit and, and last year's second half push and postseason run wasn't uh, a fluke. But I think the biggest thing for me as a Canadian girl uh, who has not seen a Canadian team win a Stanley Cup in a very, very long time. The fact that the Jets and the Canucks are at the top of the standings right now is something you could like you could have tried to bet me any amount of money in the world at the beginning of the year, and I never would have taken that bet. Um, so I'm shocked that the Jets and Canucks are doing what they're doing right now, but it's exciting. It's exciting to have teams in Canadian markets um, looking like legit contenders, and right now they do. When if, like, if you came to me in August and were like, two Canadian teams will be at the top of the standings at the halfway point. Who are they? I would have been like Toronto and Edmonton, Matthews and McDavid. <laughs> They're going to lead their teams to the promised land. Not quite the case. It's Vancouver and Winnipeg. So who saw that coming? No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody did. Anyone that says they saw that coming is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> right. That kind of leads me to my next question. And it's a two part question, but you've kind of set yourself up for it perfectly, Jackie. <laughs> is, Wonderful. It's, is this the year that a Canadian team finally reclaims the Stanley Cup? And if so, which Canadian team will it be? Uh, okay, so I don't think this is the year that a Canadian team will win a Stanley Cup. Oh, that's too but bad. I will still, but I will still answer the second part of your question. Okay. And I will say... I will say... Hmm... I'm going to say Winnipeg or Vancouver only because they've been the more yes. consistent Canadian teams to this point, and they both have goaltenders that I think can win four rounds. But I've been waiting for – I call them Helly and the Jets. <laughs> I've been waiting for Connor <laughs> Hellebuck to Jets. just, like, take over. So I'll go with Winnipeg. I'll go with Winnipeg just so that I can really push Helly and the Jets and make that a thing because <laughs> I keep saying it and – Nobody is joining me in calling them Helly and the Jets. I feel like the girl in Mean Girls who's no, like trying board. to make Fetch happen. And everyone's like, Fetch is never going to happen. Stop it. <laughs> you got to put a hashtag in front of it, Jackie. 
As, as, a, as a member Maybe of the goalie it. union, I am on board with that. <laughs> I, and I also love, I'll, I'll hand it back to Roy in a second, I just love that the two teams that you picked are both led by two great American goaltenders. So <laughs> there we yeah. go. But can't listen. We could have a whole. I could take up your whole show talking about Canada's pipeline of goalies right now. No, no, like, no, no. We don't have time. For I'm all nervous. That. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the All Star games in Toronto. Before we talk about the actual All Star game, let's talk about the decline of the Toronto Maple Leafs. For, I mean, we have Sheld- to? yeah, we have to. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Sheldon Keith's on hot seat right now. Do you actually agree with that? I do. I do. And it's not because I think that Sheldon Keith is necessarily a bad coach. I think he's done some good things. You look at his regular season records, they're good. I think he's capable of being a coach at the NHL level. I think if and when he is no longer the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, I certainly think he has another job at some point at the pro level. That all being said, this guy's been the coach of the Maple Leafs for five years now, right? How many coaches in professional sports get a five-year leash with almost no postseason winning. And a new GM. And people GM. can say, and a new mm. GM, and I don't. I mean, we a plethora of things, right? I mean, it's not like people will point to last year, oh, well, they won a round. Okay, and then they got smoked by the Florida Panthers. They won <laughs> two more games than they've won in any other postseason under Sheldon Keith, too. And most of those wins in Tampa came in overtime where the game could go either way. So for me, you know, I, I think – across the board in pro sports it's rare that you see a coach with a team of that level of talent arguably the best goal scorer on the planet right now um and not have that success um despite what you say about the roster and the holes that that have existed in it i think that that's a that's a rarity in pro sports to get that many shots at it. Mm. And then you talk about, you know, there was the year against Montreal, 3-1 series lead. That didn't work out. There's been some instances where I think a lot of coaches do lose their job after failing to, to get it done or, or take the team a little bit further. So I think him being on the hot seat is it's deserved because of the expectations uh, for this team under or over, I should say, um, Austin Matthews. I will say, though, that this is certainly not the best roster that Sheldon Keith has had to coach during his time as the head coach. Mm-hmm. But it's, your job is to win, right? So you got to find right. a way. And I, I know I'm rambling a bit here, but it's because it's my team. And I bleed <laughs> blue. But, you know, Sheldon Keith's taking heat today because of comments he made about, oh, we're 42 games through the season and we still don't know who we can rely on out there. And I think part of the problem with Sheldon Keith is that outside of his core players, he doesn't trust his bottom six. He doesn't mm-hmm. trust the majority of his lineup to play the way he needs them to defensively. And while I empathize with that, you can't lead with fear as a coach. I think at some point you have to find roles for your players, find their strengths and maximize those strengths. Um, and I think he kind of coaches in a way where he's trying to avoid um, their weaknesses and, and avoid giving them a chance to grow or evolve as players. Jackie, I wanted to ask you about uh, your interview with Gary Bettman on your most recent episode of the Jackie Redmond Show, which was a really interesting interview. I, <laughs> I loved hearing him kind of embrace the booing, which I guess you kind of have to if you're the yeah. commissioner. So I wanted to ask, though, if you, uh, not if, when, the day that you take his job, the day yeah. that you become NHL ah! commissioner, what's the first thing that you're going to do on your day, your first day as commissioner? What's the first rule that you're going to change? Oh, my gosh. Okay, let me think about this for a second. And while I think I will kill time uh, by talking about Bettman, talking about the booze, I, you know, that interview, we were like, you know what, this show is about personality. It's about fun. Let's get the commissioner on because he is like off camera. He is so fun and he has a great sense of humor. And so we tried to kind of highlight some of that in that interview. Um, but yeah, and it's very, it's very WWE to embrace the booze and lean into being a quote unquote heel heel. And I think that, (laughs) I think that Gary Bettman has done that. And I, I almost think that the booing at this point is just something that we do as hockey fans. I think there's probably a lot of casual fans out there that partake that don't even really know why or how that even began for Gary Bettman. But to answer your your main question, what would what would I change if I were commissioner? You know, I know that people love the shootout and the three on three overtime, and I understand I understand why it's there. I understand the business side of it. I understand that it's about 
excitement and entertainment in the regular season. But I think that as somebody who's constantly trying to make predictions or analyze teams, records for teams and, and where they are in the standings can be a little bit hard to there's a yeah. little there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors involved if you know what I'm saying and I think you really have to dig through the numbers now to be like okay yes this team has this many points and they're doing this but like how many regulation wins do they have how many of their wins have come in a shootout which mm-hmm. is you know okay if you have three of the more elite players on your team it's not you know it's not hockey it's 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 a, I shouldn't say this, but it's 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 just not a real indication of who the better team is. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that would be, yep. but that's just me. That that's just no, my. That's why the skills opinion. competition is on Friday and the All Star game is on Saturday. That's why they're on different days because yes. they're different things. Mm. Yes, for sure. Yeah, totally with you. That was the perfect answer. A plus uh, plus. Speaking of the All Star, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> speaking of the uh, All Star game, our All Star coverage is basically going to include uh, this abomination that uh, we're going to put on the screen right now, and that's the All-Star jerseys. Uh, obviously, you oh, saw gosh. these. Um, and apparently, these were designed by, uh, in part by Justin Bieber. Let's take a look at the back of the jerseys here on video. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if uh, you have any bias e- either way, considering that Justin Bieber is a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. But um, what is your opinion on these unholy pieces of crap jerseys oh, that man. we've just seen? You're not giving her any room. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell me how you really feel. No, <laughs> um, I. OK, so here's my thing. My initial reaction was like, OK, that's different. <laughs> and the front <laughs> it's different listen i'll give credit to anybody that's willing to try something different i really will because it it's not easy to do in today's world where we all have opinions but the front of the jersey i can grow to appreciate for what it is it's different it's a little more cartoony i don't know if that's what they're going for but like okay the front of the jersey you know what all right, let's be a little wacky, have a little fun. I feel like I'm in an episode of like Animaniacs and like these are the jerseys <laughs> that we're wearing at All Star Weekend. It's fine. I love Animaniacs. Oh, yeah, wacko jerseys. Under- yeah. It's all a little I- lame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could so do the, uh, the you could do the state capital song with uh, these jerseys. <laughs> um, but the back, the back with the lowercase, like. I'm an all-star. I want my name to pop, you, you know, go. like, especially like Sammy Reinhardt, first year all-star, right? Never been an all-star before. Can we get some caps? Yeah. Can we get some capital letters? Yeah, at least the like, R this in this situation. Is a, a man possessed right now. He yeah. came goal streak. He is unbelievable. Yeah, he's playing in front of a, uh, a Happy Meal box, apparently, uh, <laughs> the way those are. Look. I do love a Happy Meal, though, I got to say. Yep. Yeah, but as a consensus uh, on this show, we can officially say uh, that these jerseys are <laughs> really bad. The Jackie Red. You know what? Show. I hear. I do hear they're selling well. I will say that. Man, you're lying. Oh, hate you're selling. lying. I know. I did hear that. <laughs> People I are did hate hear buying. that. So <laughs> the Bieber pull. Maybe the Bieber pull is it's real. Oh, you it's know? like the Taylor oh, Swift effect. All the Travis Kelsey jerseys get bought up. So now Bieber is into these. So maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. Oh. Perhaps, but we 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 don't take any t- all all love for Taylor Swift over here. I'm a diehard Swifty, yeah, diehard. Swifty. Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna oh, insult her. No, I don't want to get time. jumped down the street. That, no, no, no Swifty shade. No, yeah, no shade on Swift. <laughs> not at all. That's not what this is about. No, the Jackie Redman show on the NHL's YouTube channel is where you can find her. Jackie Redman, thank you for joining us. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been a blast. I don't know which hockey teams you guys root for. Are either of you guys Leafs fans? Uh, no, they happen to play in our division, so that would be a most definite. Who do, who do you cheer for? We are Florida. We cover the Florida Panthers uh, very unbiasedly, by the way. Uh, we are professional oh. media members, and uh, <laughs> listen, I cannot say that about myself and the Leafs. I am absolutely a biased journalist. Yeah, they actually. They, I'm not even a journalist, to be real. Yeah, oh. neither are we. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to go in the corner we're right sports, now, dude. You're killing me. We're sports commentators right now. We're, co- we're sports commentators. We I comment like yeah, on we, the we game. Com- that's, let's just go with that. But listen, if we get Leafs-Panthers round two, it's on. It's on. The rematch. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Thanks for having me, guys.